We're in a series on the limitless riches of Christ today, boundless love. You know, there are many expressions of God's uh, limitless riches that are in Christ. And we have looked at many of these already. And I, as I have pondered and I thought about this multiple times, I have never reached a, the end of his blessings. And I, I want to tell you that we will never reach the end of the limitless riches that God has prepared in Christ. But of all of the expressions of the limitless riches of Christ, the greatest of these is the boundless love of God that is manifested toward us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. There was only one motive in God sending his son. God so loved. Yes. Everybody say love. God loved you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You need to know that it was love. Much of the limitless riches of Christ that we are receiving is because of this boundless love. God has an abundance of love. How many of you feel loved? I want you to know today, if I could, if I, could I would express to you from me the boundless love of God, but I would not be able to do it because it's greater than I can express. God's love is great. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, and verse 14 through verse 8, 19. Follow with me on the screen. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Stay right there, man. I want you to see this. God wants to strengthen you in your inner man. That's your innermost being. Do any of you from time to time feel weak inside? Have you ever had those attacks inside where you just felt like, I'm crushed inside. I can't go on. Here's what the Lord wants to do. He wants to strengthen you according to the riches of his glory by his might through the Holy Spirit in your inner man. I, I wish we could do this. I, I, I don't know if the practice would help us, but have, have you ever seen a bullfrog uh, just swell up? Could you swell up this morning with the riches of Jesus Christ inside of you and just tell the enemy, I'm bigger than you are. There's something working inside of me that's great. There's something mighty inside of me. I'm mighty through God. Yes, amen. Wow. I can already feel that. Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love. You're rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18. May be able to comprehend with all the saints... What is the width, length, and depth, and height? To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So I, I get a visual image, and I put this picture of a tree uh, to help you gain this visual image. Suppose the tree is you, and that you're rooted and grounded into the love of God. So that by being rooted into this, you may be able to comprehend or understand or take in the, the width and length and depth and height. What is that width, length, depth and height? He's talking about our being rooted into something that is bigger than us. I'm glad, I'm glad that God is not my size. Amen. That he's bigger than me. So when we are rooted in, and grounded into him, we're taking in from something that is bigger than us so that we may know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. And then this last phrase is very important so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is God's intent. He wants you to, to be. This sounds bad. Sat suffers. 
You are, you are a tree that's rooted into something that is great. And you're just constantly drinking in. You're drinking in the goodness of God. Being rooted and grounded in love is another expression of the limitless riches of Christ. God wants you to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. So if it passes knowledge and I'm rooted and grounded in it, that means that I will never, I will never exhaust what it is that God has prepared for us in Christ. So we're delving into the depths of Christ's love. The fullness of God is related to the expression of Christ's boundless love. So I'm rooted. The text says we're rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Rooted and grounded. I want your roots to go deep this morning. Do you know God is a passion of God? The Bible teaches us that God is love. God is love. His zeal or his intense emotion is expressed most clearly in love. God loves. Could I let you know, if, if I could speak for God this morning, God would say, I love you. Of all of the messages that God could give you, this is probably one of the, the greatest messages. God wants to tell you, I love you. So when we become fully rooted and grounded in his love, we may be able, or we are enabled to be able to comprehend what is the width, length, and depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. I cannot know the fullness of his love if I'm not rooted and grounded in him. Right. Rooted and grounded uh, has a lot of messages in it. It means stability. It means staying power. It means this is my home. This is where I belong. I, I am rooted and grounded in Christ. Ephesians 2 and verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Can I have an amen? Amen. See, God's passion for us is demonstrated in Christ by love. Right. God so loved that he gave his son. To comprehend this boundless love, we must really see what God has done for us. And the more you see what God has done for you, let me say it another way, what God is doing for you. God is doing something for you right now. You may not understand it, you may not feel it, you, Sometimes we feel like we are isolated and alone and we're not. That's when our roots have to remain deep in the love of God. Hallelujah. When you're going through things, you need to know, I'm not, I'm not a free floater. I'm, I'm rooted in Jesus Christ. I'm rooted in the love of God. Uh, it might help us to start saying something like, I know that the Lord loves me. I know that he loves me because there is this love coming up into me. There's this message. It's, it's not just a subtle message. It's really a, a very vivid message that you are rooted and grounded in the love of God. And you are soaking in. You are bringing in the vitality of the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 1 says... And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. How did he make us alive and give us life? John 3 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The incarnation, the incarnation means Christ coming down in the flesh. The incarnation of Christ is an integral part of the manifestation of God's love for us. Yes. The love of God is revealed through the gift of his son. There is no greater gift than that could be given than the son. God has revealed through the love of Christ various things in our life. 
Oh, thank God for all of the limitless riches of Christ that are revealed to us because God loves you. Amen. God's loving kindness and mercy is revealed to us by his watchful care over our lives. I, I want to tell you, God's watching over you. Yes, he is. Whatever it is you're going through in this life, you need to know that God is watching over you. And the clearest expression of God's love is revealed in the birth, the life, and the death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is an expression of God's love for you. He loves you so much that he sent his son. In the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, but God demonstrated. You know, God demonstrated. God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrated, God revealed, God made manifest, God made known his love toward us in that Christ died for us. And it wasn't because we were so good that Christ died. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. First John 4 and 9 says, in this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So the incarnation is the unmistakable expression of God's boundless love. Jesus was anointed or appointed by God the Father to express his love through every word, every thought, and the things that he did. Within the expression of his love, God sent his son. Yes. If you want to know that God loves you, let me tell you, look at the cross. Look at Christ. See what Jesus suffered. Look at the nail-pierced hands. Look at the bleeding black back. You will see that God loves you. Christ is the unveiling or the revealing, the demonstration of God's love toward us. You cannot know the depth of the love of God without the revelation of Jesus Christ, his son. For God so loved me, you, that he gave his son. Ponder that a second. God loved me so much that he gave his son. So the extent of God's love for me is the expression that God was willing that Jesus Christ would suffer shame, ridicule, pain, suffering, death, God loved me. This is boundless love. This is the unlimited love of God. To comprehend how big this is, we, I mean, the width, the length, the depth, the height of this, how great is the love of God? You've, you've got to have roots that go down into it. You've got to dig down into the love of God. Ponder how great it is. Roots suggest a plant life. A tree has roots. Do you know that? And it has to have roots that go down into water. My neighbor had uh, was trying to uh, dress up his property, and he had a tree in the backyard. The tree was between our properties, and the tree had a root that was just about as big around as the tree trunk that was sticking up out of the ground. And that tree trunk was headed over to his patio and it, it already had started cracking the patio. And so the, the neighbor, in order to try to dress up his yard and uh, keep the tree from ruining his patio, cut the root, cut it off, and removed it. The next morning he woke up and the tree was laying on his house. He didn't realize that that was the only root to that tree. We must have spiritual roots that go down into something. Yes. If you don't, you're going to be laying down. <laughs> you're not going to have life. You're going to die. 
And what is it that our roots are going down into? The Word has taught us this morning that our roots go down into the love of God that is manifested in Jesus Christ. In the book of Psalms, chapter 1, it gives us this greater image of this, and it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So where is it we get our nourishment? If you're getting your nourishment from your roots that are going down into the love of God, you need to let those roots sink deep and start drawing in from the life flow that is coming to you from God's boundless love. Amen. So when we go deep, something starts happening in us. Not only are we sustained and we're able to, to withstand in the evil day, not only are we able to stand when trouble comes, when difficulty comes, the reason we do is because our roots are deep. Right. Now, if your roots are on the surface and, and something happens, you may not be able to withstand in an evil day. But if you have roots that go down into a place where the spiritual rivers of water flow, where the love of God is being manifest to you, something's going to happen in your life. According to this verse, the tree, the person whose roots go deep, will bear fruit in its season. That's good news. Because every one of us needs some fruit. Do you need some joy, some peace, and contentment, some love? Do you need some, some help, some, some strength, some manifestation of the character and the nature of God? The, deeper you go, the, the more that the flow comes up through you, the more his character is going to be manifested in you. Amen. So here's what you got to do. Let me give you a side note. When the winds of adversity start blowing, you start saying to yourself and to the enemy who is blowing against you, my roots are deep. Yes, amen. I'm sunk down deep. I'm not going to move. Having done all to stand, I'm going to stand. The, the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness may come against me, but I'm sunk deep, and I'm sunk deep into the love of God that is manifested in Jesus Christ. And I know beyond a doubt I'm going to be able to stand. This thing's going to pass, but I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Ephesians 3 and 19 says to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, the Amplified is an expanded translation. That verse in the Amplified, listen closely because it's long. It says that you may really come to know through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far passes mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness of God and become wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Hallelujah. I like that. So I've tapped into something that is bigger than I am. It's bigger than my need is. And I'm going to be filled up according to the word. I'm going to be filled up uh, and flooded by that that I'm tapped into. I'm rooted and grounded into the love of Christ. And it causes me to be filled with all of the fullness of God. Hallelujah. This is not an... Uh, an exaltation of you. It's an exaltation of what you're rooted into. It's the very substance that's giving you life and strength in your life. It's that you are rooted and grounded in the Lord himself. Hallelujah. You know, the only way a tree gets nourishment and strength to stand is by going deep. 
And the deeper it goes and the more it taps into the, the flow of the, the nutrients and the water below, the stronger the tree gets. Uh, God's vision for you is that you would be rooted and grounded by the river of the Holy Spirit into the love of Christ so that you are strengthened with the very power of God in your life. God wants you to be strengthened with his power. Ephesians 3 and 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, look at that word dwell, that Christ may dwell. It literally means to settle down and fill at home to live in. I want to live in the love of God. Paul is praying that your spiritual depth will go so deep that you will be firm, unmovable, always abounding, bearing fruit, revealing Christ's love. Not because I've read it and I've Practice, it's because it's flowing up into me. There is, there is a river of life flowing up into me, and it's manifesting itself. That river of life is manifesting itself by the fruit that I am bearing in my life. Ephesians 5 and 2. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, and offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. I want you to watch this real closely. Christ's love for us caused him to give himself for us. That offering and sacrifice that Christ made was a sweet-smelling aroma to God. Now hold on to that and listen to this from 2 Corinthians. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us, through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So here's in practical life, here's what's happening. I'm tapped in. And in my daily life, there's something that is expressing the fragrance of Christ. Yes. You know, that fragrance is there even when you don't know it. Do any of you wear cologne or uh, aftershave or body spray or something? And after a while, you don't notice that you've got it on. Have you noticed that? And you walk into the grocery store or into the doctor's office and somebody says, I sure like your cologne. Has that ever happened to you? You said, I don't smell anything. Well, you don't, because you are so accustomed to it that you're you're not, you don't know that it's coming out of you. There is this in Christ that comes out of you as a believer that the world is going to see. Look at the fragrance of Christ that is coming out of them. It is, it is manifest in the abundant life of God that is working in us. It is manifest in the miracles that come into our life and what God is doing through us. It's manifest by the grace and the flow of the Holy Spirit that is working in us. This fountainhead of God's power is coming up through you. It is the boundless love of God that will not end in your life. You're going to always be radiating this even when you don't know it. Yeah. Ephesians 2 and verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Isn't this wonderful? Yes, amen. You didn't deserve this. Amen. But God planted you in. And you are a partaker. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. God planted you in. And you are a partaker of 
this richness that is in Christ. I'm included. Until you're rooted and grounded in his love. Here's the good news. I don't have to transplant myself into the love of God. All I have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I am saved. But I have to draw you can't be flippant about this. You have to stay rooted and grounded in him. If I could do any one thing for any of you this morning, it would be this. I would, I would help you to tap in. I've been reading some articles recently about the water supply in our region. They're saying that the aqua uh, river that's underneath the, the plains of Texas, New Mexico is dropping. That it's down about 100 foot. And what that means is that wells are having to go deeper to get water. In times of adversity, you have to go deeper to get water. In times of hardship in your life, You've got to press yourself down. Amen. Lord, I'm drawing from you. Jesus, I need more of you. Some of you right now are recognizing with the things that's happening in your lives, you're recognizing I need something to keep life flowing. I need something that will give me new joy. Dig down. 